All right, everybody, welcome back to episode three of the American Empire. In this series, we're playing Empire Total War as the United States of America and trying to conquer the world. In the last episode, we faced off against the Cherokee here in the Cherokee Territory, and we won, completely conquering the Cherokee Nations. We've seen several rebellions throughout the Cherokee Nations, but we've subdued them every time. We even saw a rebellion here in Virginia, which was weird, but we've uh, taken care of that. Towards the end of the turn, uh, France, or the United Provinces declared war on our ally, France. So we are now at war with uh, the United Provinces. And we have sent a ship containing a brand new army south into South America to try and conquer some of their territories here in the Americas. Alright, so let's go ahead and get to the next turn so we can continue our progression towards whatever that name is. France is not doing so well in Europe, so we have to do well here so that we can kind of cripple the United Provinces' uh, economy by conquering their territories here in the Americas. Workers are riding in the Cane Tuck Territory again. We used to that at this point. And we are one turn away from having troops here and Paramaribo. Paramaribo, Dutch. Yeah, well. Having troops here in this territory. And once we conquer that, I just did notice they have this territory as well, so we'll go ahead and take that from them. Um, and hopefully that will kind of cripple their economy and prevent them from being able to uh, hold a strong hold a strong front against France. So we want to help our allies out any way that we can. That's going to the year 1800. It's already 1799. Well, I did not see that coming. Let's see what they have. Briggs, two fifth rates and a sixth rate. We've got a sixth rate carnate frigate and the fifth rate. I think we can win this, but I'm not sure. I'm not too great at naval battles, but we're certainly going to try our best. Those Briggs, I'm not too concerned about. They'll go down easy, but it's the two fifth rates and the sixth rate. That I'm, mostly the two fifth rates. The sixth rate, I'm not too worried about either. Let's just go ahead and put these guys in a line, toggle them as a group. Let's send them into battle. I never really know how to handle naval battles. Okay, so that's one of their fifth rates, and I'm assuming the other fifth rate is there at the rear. Yep. There are two brigs and the sixth rate in here. And we already got shots going off. Already taking some hits. We're gonna want to get closer. I'm gonna get hits off on these brigs. If we sink them, we can hopefully lower the morale of their force. Good clean shot. Good hit against them. This ship's going to take a lot of hits. Good volley. 
I cannot lose this fleet. I should have prepared a stronger fighting force for the Navy. Maybe if we get lucky, we can kind of sneak up behind them and get some surprise shots on them while they're turning. Kind of have the wind to our advantage. We are going to catch them. That's good. We'll be able to get some shots off on the rear of their fleet. So this ship's going to get hit, which is good for us. Expect a volley there, but all right. There we go, that's going to be a good hit. Right where they can't defend. If we sink one of these fifth rates, we might have a pretty good chance. Just got to sink one first. They're about to get right up on the back end of my fleet. They're going to hit this ship hard. The Connecticut's not going to do well. Yep, they're going to hit the Connecticut. Well, good thing is most of their shots missed. I want to get more shots on this ship. I really want to sink this one. Should be in range of our guns in just a second. There we go. And another volley.
Naval battles are very slow. Basically just circling each other at this point. Which is all I really can do in this. But this ship is uh, getting close to sinking, hopefully. going in the direction of the wind again. If we can sink this ship, I think it'll raise the morale of the fleet and hopefully give us a much better fighting chance. Because right now they have us outgunned. in a minute, which is good. We just continue firing on them, preventing them from hitting us. They're going to hit the Connecticut again, though. Yep. We got a good shot off on the Fanfuron, I think that's its name. I have no clue how to pronounce that. I need the Connecticut to start shooting, though. Can't get it in range. So this ship has taken some good hull damage here, which means it's going to be close to sinking. The ship's going to sink soon, as you can see here. This uh, left green bar is the morale. The right one is the uh, ship's integrity. So it's in the orange, which means it's really low. And I just saw a little flash there. I think they're getting nervous. Since we're outgunning their big ship. Which is really good for us. Yeah, we're gonna get a little volley off on them. Oh yeah, they're gonna be sinking here soon. And once they sink, that should be a dramatic morale drop to their uh, their other ships. Yep, there it goes. And that was their admiral too. Oh, we have we've won.
That is going to be a crushing blow to them. Let's actually have the whole fleet just come about here. We sunk their flagship. That is fantastic. So we are just going to charge straight through the fucking middle of them. Oh, keep going. Don't stop. That ship's about to sink or surrender. Yep, they've they're running away. Oh, they're back though. But they won't be back for long. And just like that, they're sinking. They might end up losing to Connecticut in this fight, though. Taking some pretty hard hits. I'm surprised the AI's morale is holding up so well. I've sunk two of their ships and they're still fighting. Oh, that's a six right there. But the Connecticut's not going to go down without a fight. Connecticut sinking. Which is not good for us. Need to take out that other brig. Try and get my other ship out of there. Because if we lose this ship, we lose the army as well. But their other brig sank. So we took down three of their ships. And they took down two of ours. Try and retreat. Hopefully, that ship can't escape. Their admiral's dead, so I don't think they're able to pursue. But my admiral's also dead. They're not pursuing either, so that's good.
hopefully that ship can escape with the army. Okay, good. Are you kidding me? Well, this isn't good. So we're going to have to build up a naval force. I did not expect the United Provinces to have a naval force. Let's get my ship out of there. We might be able to make a run at them still, at their territory, but we might in all honesty just need to retreat back to the homeland. Rebuild a force. I don't know that pursuing this this fight is going to be a very good one for us. Considering they still have a 5th rate out here. Both a 5th rate and a 6th rate. They're damaged, but... There's no way... Yeah, it's just a Karenade frigate. really didn't expect them to have a naval presence. I don't know why I didn't expect that, but I didn't. Ooh, retreat. They're catching up. Oh, I keep hitting the wrong button. Dude, where's the line? Because they're getting... They're getting close. They're faster than my ship. Okay, there it is. We made it. Jesus, they got big fleets over there, too. So we might... I'm going to see if we can make a... Because if I can get that army on the ground, that's all we need to worry about. And then I'll rebuild a fleet, and we'll move south and crush their fleet. But we, we need to get that army in there before they can send an army north and take us out. Not great for us. Not great at all. Oh, we got a rebellion on the Kane Tuck territory again. I thought you guys were over this. Undaunted. Undefeated. Yeah, that didn't last long. Nathaniel Green's army, though, is almost good enough to leave the Cherokee Nations because they're mostly under control at this point. Alright, let's see if we can make it there. I don't think we can. Alright, we cannot. I'm going to pull back this army. Or this navy. Well, and the army. And we're going to rebuild a fleet here. Um, shoot. Let's build up two fourth rates to escort it. An admiral's flagship fifth rate. So our invasion is going to be delayed by five turns. Actually longer because it's going to take us three turns to get there. So eight turns until we're going to be able to invade. All because of that small little fleet that just wiped me out. I was not expecting that. They have a huge naval force in Europe though. Jeez. 
but my two fourth rate ships and the fifth rate that I'm recruiting should be able to handle a fifth rate and a sixth rate. Oh, the national leader has died. Warren Cooper. So we have Simeon Young as the new president of the United States. I don't even know how to pronounce the Crimean Con Conate. That nation was destroyed. I don't know who they are. I might want to build up some roads and recruit some more infantry here at home. Just because there's a lot of uh, movement up in the Iroquois Confederacy. And they aren't the biggest fans of us. This fleet is still on its way back. Four turns till we'll be ready to set sail again. That was a crushing defeat, though. The Iroquois have an interesting battle strategy. They keep their units, they keep their army small, but have many of them. As you can see, they've got three right there on the map. All small armies, but they just can go around and wreak havoc. One turn till the fourth rates are completed, and three until my fifth rate admiral's flagship. We'll get that ship into port and get it repaired. Awaiting further orders. We'll keep the army with them. I never prepared when I play this game for uh, enemy naval forces. I always just think I can sneak right past them, and you really can't. They have too far of a reach. Benjamin Bunker. Banneker? I don't know. Alright, so we got the two fourth rates recruited, along with our Carinade frigate. Two more turns until the flagship is completed. I'm actually going to sneak in another fifth rate. That way we can have just a little bit stronger of a naval presence in the Caribbean. Well, we're going further south than the Caribbean. game freeze no it didn't uh, just because we don't have the ability to see inside of these nations
and one turn until they're ready. So let's get some construction going on in here. I just realized I haven't done that in a couple turns. Let's upgrade our roads throughout the nation. Alright, that's all the roads we can build. I want to have the best roads, because essentially my battle plan is to leave small armies to the capitals and then have uh, a couple of large armies rotating around. And the small army is going to hold off the attacking force until our larger army can come to assist them. The fleet should be ready to set sail. It is. What is that one? The USS Constitution. This takes zero turns. You know what? We're going to do it. We're going to get the Constitution. And we'll upgrade some more roads while we're at it. We cannot, because we bought the Constitution. Get us that historical little ship. The Constitution, I believe, was a pretty small ship, but it uh, held its own against a massive British ship during the War of 1812, I think it was. Yeah, the War of 1812 was when the Constitution was used. Because we didn't really have a naval force during the Revolutionary War. Uh, we did, but it, well, not even really. It was mostly just small, very small ships with one or two cannons. Just used for transporting troops across giant bodies of water, unlike the ocean, because we didn't really use the ocean much. Most of that war was fought on the land. Alright. And there we have it, the USS Constitution. All right, let's set sail again. It's actually their naval force seem to be coming out of here. So let's head for there. I mean, actually, it's only gonna take us two turns to get to Punda. So we'll take that. And we'll find some more roads to upgrade. I want all my roads to be upgraded. Selective breeding. Interesting. And the House of Representatives was constructed in Pennsylvania. Now our troops are going to la make landfall. Oh, and they have no force to defend this. Yeah, flintlocked armed citizenry. We are not even going to stay. We're gonna heal up this army. And we're moving on. What is this? Pulaski's Legion? Cancer Cavalry. I don't know what they are. Alright, we'll give them a turn or two. Let that army heal up just a bit before we make the big push. don't think they should have any more territory here in the Americas besides these two. 
Well, we've already taken one. We've already dramatically weakened their economy. Your overseas colonies generate a fair amount of money for you, especially these ones in South America and India. They uh, are rich in resources like gold and silver. India actually is mostly rich in spices and dime er, and different jewels. But, yeah, let's see. Our army is actually going to be well enough to load up and move out. Bye. And then we'll recruit some Minutemen, a cannon, and a militia group to uh, defend this small island. Other than that, Ship shape and the fashion, Captain. We are victorious. What ship did we lose? Oh, we lost one of the fifth rates. Well, we'll take this one, which is a fifth rate. All right, that works. We lost a fifth rate and captured a fifth rate, but we defeated their army that was most likely heading for us. This little island is in total anarchy, so we'll take that too. So in the next turn, we're going to capture whatever that territory is called. Doge? I don't know. But we'll, we'll take that one and push them out of the Americas entirely. It looks like France has actually started to win the war in Europe. So with our combined forces, we should be able to end this war pretty soon. Or we can force them into a peace treaty. Another missionary in Karaka and oh, over here. People are not happy there. Well, they didn't have any. I think that was their entire military force that we just sank in that ship. Pretty sure we took out any resistance they had. But yeah, you can see we got a gold mine here, a gem mine. Like, this is a good area to be. Who is this again? General Horace Hamilton. We're doing pretty good for ourselves right now. Checking up on the infrastructure. Now we should be able to force the United Provinces to the table to sign a peace treaty. Because they're losing land in Europe as well. They had a good push there for a minute. can build a great arsenal. And let's focus on and not those roads. I don't really care about the roads on this small island. There's nowhere to go land wise. And I guess we've subdued their rioting already. We need to repair our navy, but we don't have the funds right now, because I just spent it all on building roads.
Well, the people don't like the vice president. Or the naval secretary. I don't blame them. Got a new port in New England. Nice. Corland has arrived. I believe that's a European nation. Let's repair our navy. Let's upgrade that. And we're going to make, before the end of this episode, we're going to make a push to take Trinidad. I think we can do that. We actually, we might have to take that by sea. I don't think we can take that by land. No, we can't because this is Grand Columbia here. So we're going to have to go in by sea. Wow. We actually are going to move throughout here and conquer some of these islands because these are both, they, these have no government here. So we can come in, we can take... Uh, both of these. Hispan... Hispaniola? I don't know how to pronounce that. And Cuba are both leaderless at the moment. So we're going to come in and we're going to... Oh, so is Guatemala. You know what? I bet this was all... And Panama. These are all remnants from... Uh, Spain. Spain controlled all these colonies. So once our fleet's repaired, we'll load up our army, and we'll start taking some territories. We will quickly expand our empire. My initial goal was to focus primarily on conquering the modern-day United States. But that has shifted as new opportunities have arose. Oh, well, I was not paying attention. As the Navy's all healed up, March. we are actually going to need to build a small defensive Ready force for. here. Because they're not going to be happy once our military leaves. They're already not happy that our military left the capital. And we're going to set sail for Trinidad. We're just going to come through and just start taking places. I'm just realized I'm still at war with the United Provinces. I haven't tried to settle that yet. I probably should probably send a massive army my way. Because once they send an army, they won't uh, they won't come to the table. Alright, we learned fire in advance. Workers are on strike down here, but they are already kind of over it. We're going to build up military governor's mansion and some walls there. The army's still healing. We're going to need to build some militia. Not for my army, but for the defense of that new territory. I once again forgot about the United Provinces. That is how small they are to me.
Workers are on strike down here. But they're going to get over it pretty quickly. Oh, they burned the capital. Let's look at this. You are staying here. The rest of the army is leaving. Yes. Forward for crown and country. And the rest of the army is going to set sail right here. Prepare the troops for battle. Moving along, taking territory after territory. Let's actually let's end this war that we've got going on. United Providences. Oh yeah, they're they're losing. Interesting that their allies did not come to their aid. But let's try and get some. Some money out of this. All right, whatever. Let's just request peace. That way we can kind of. Whoops. Well, we're going back to war with the United Provinces. Look at good news. Um, we're gonna have a lot of fights coming up soon. Let's actually do our best to end the war with Great Britain. Well, well, this army's gonna load back up on this ship and take out. So we're gonna need help. We are now at war with two very powerful nations. We don't have a whole lot of way to defend ourselves right now. With well, we have an army in uh, we have an army in uh, Virginia, a small one, commanded by General Sullivan, I believe. Nathaniel Green will push westward and try to conquer those armies. Well, I wanted a war with the Iroquois in Britain at some point. Here it is. Wonder if we can... Hmm, no, we can't. Yes, sir. Let's get them over there. Let's get that ship over there. Let's get them... Loaded up and heading back up north. We're going to need all the help we can get. I think we're going to need help in the north. So we're going to send you north to Maine. And General Green. Hold the line. That's all I can say. We'll let those armies come in a little bit closer and then we'll attack. I'm going to send my army from Virginia north to try and hit the Iroquois in more of the center of their nation. We'll combine them with the force in Pennsylvania. That'll give us three fairly strong fighting forces. The Iroquois, although they're strong, will still be fighting with mostly bows and axes, so we should 
Nathaniel Green should be able to hold them here in the Cherokee territory. Jeez. Um, those armies moved south. I'm going to send General Green to intercept them. And then General Sullivan, you're going to move north. And Join up with the force in Pennsylvania. And then this force is going to focus on the British. Who's blocking our path? Take him out. No, I didn't mean that. I meant to, I thought that was like a demand surrender button. Ah, oh, that's going to look bad. Ah. Oh. It's been a minute since I've actually played the game. <laughs> Alright, I'm not exactly sure how to handle the Iroquois nations right now. Iroquois Confederacy. They've got they've split their two armies up now. I was really hoping to take them both on at once. Now they've split them up. I'm not sure that chasing them is gonna be the best idea. Because I don't want to lose any territories. They are just raiding our shorelines. Right, let's get them back up there. We're going to have this army, commanded by General Sullivan, march there. We can actually... We are in attacking distance with them. That's going to have to wait until the next episode. So we're already an hour into this one. Alright. So that's going to be it for this episode. If you did like this video, please hit that like button and subscribe. And join us back in the next episode where we really kick off this war with the Iroquois and the British. Alright, see you all next time.